the concept of orchestrating um, bots and with with predefined workflow logic that is in that I, I'm assuming is defined within um, a, a tool that is part of the RPA platform. You can correct yeah. me if, if that's not the case. Yeah. And and this now becomes workflow logic that is introduced um, on top of existing business process logic, but it's now workflow logic specific to orchestrating bots. T tell, tell us about your experience with that. To what extent, you know, how sophisticated is this orchestration um, capability right now? Um, do you, is it always a central orchestrator interacting with bots individually or can one bot also invoke another bot um, via its API? How how have you seen that whole workflow aspect of this um, come to shape? How, how much is that part of your implementation? And also, what's your opinion about the, the current level of, of functionality that's available with these tools? Yeah, well, actually, there, there are um, uh, roughly two ways in, in which we can uh, start a robot. It's either by a schedule, so it's an orchestrator, and where you say this is uh, the steps or the robots I want to uh, to start in a certain order, or they just wait for each other because we there is also a queue um, uh, implemented in the in the platform. So I, I can either just come from outside from a different uh, a third party uh, application if they can connect to our uh, um, management console, uh, our platform. Um, they can get a ticket and they can get uh, a, a queue, uh, a seat in the queue, and uh, we process them if they have the right credentials. Um, but there's also uh, an another way of um, starting robots. It's not by an orchestrator, but it, it is by uh, a, a type of user interface. Because um, some, because we all already found out in the in the very beginning that sometimes it, it, maybe it's in the middle of the process or in the beginning or uh, you have something which is uh, impossible to get by a robot. Um, it's data which is lacking, which we cannot get if it's, uh, for example, if it's data which is stuck in a photo, and we have, we 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 don't want to take all the hassle to to get an extra application and get that data out. So we ask. Um, an employee to uh, a, a real person um, to open a document for us, uh, check a number uh, or uh, whatever we we're missing in our flow, uh, fill it in in some uh, in some web form and just click on start. Mm -hmm. And what it does then is it's it's uh, it's an on demand robot. So it's it immediately goes uh, uh, starts well it goes into the queue as well. Um, more often than not with a little bit higher priority because you don't want uh, those uh, uh, processes to uh, to wait very long. Uh, but you, you start with a little bit of user interfer in interference. Um, and then you start the robot uh, uh, at, at any time you want. And uh, the advantage is it's, um, it's very useful for time critical processes or where you lack a certain kind of uh, information. Um, so in, in, in those two types, um, uh, most of our bots are, uh, the ones with user orchest orchestrator, um, and we, we let them run in the middle of the night, uh, cause, um, well, it, it, it's easier. It's uh, load, load, uh, for load, load balancers and for all the systems, uh, that we're running, it's easier to do it at night. Um, but, but yeah, you, you can, um, you, you can make it as, uh, um, as 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 difficult as you want, um, and you were talking about uh, um, uh, third party before, uh, and and um, uh, it, stuff. Well, hybrid solutions and in the cloud, um, we have a few suppliers like well, um, the the whole Microsoft Office uh, three sixty five platform is in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going from our platform outside of the uh, the. The gateway to uh, to go to that um, uh, environment, but also we have a few suppliers which also not running it on 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 our systems, and are are basically um, a service which we're um, which we're using, and there is even one where we just said, well, this is our API, 
uh, um, you want to use some data from us. No, sorry, the other way around. They, we needed some data from them and they, they uh, applied us a, an API and we just connected to them for the information and, and went on with the rest of the process, which we uh, were using for, um, what is it, HR kind of um, mm-hmm. uh, things we had to do. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's it's really not limited to to only in inside your cor- uh, corporation or, or uh, you, yeah, cloud-based is also uh, also possible, and uh, also with the newest um, newest technology, because you have to to be aware that you're going outside of the of, of your own uh, company, so you have to be aware about uh, uh, safety and encryption, um, which is um, always uh, something that you have to take really care of, because otherwise it's uh, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, yeah, the whole also security can aspect about... would be worth a separate conversation of its own. Sorry, Kevin, go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, security is a separate, uh, separate topic, yeah. I think. <laughs> um, but you, you also can think about simple robots like uh, password reset. Um, we 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 use them, but we use them with uh, REST calls, uh, I think. Uh, Which one? That uh, our password reset. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it it's it runs is, directly so uh, you you fill out a form right. who you are which application and and then it immediately fires uh, um, the rest call to our end application for resetting your password so there's no identity and access management um, who, who who has his hands on hmm. is the what is the standard api of of an R- RPA bot, I, I, do you interact with it using REST, or does it support um, RPC? You know what what type of typical protocols we, are, do you our, use? Our platform, uh, but but most of the platforms use REST, uh, which is the common uh, common uh, mm-hmm. mo- well most common use, I would say. Um, um, our platform also supports uh, SOAP uh, calls um, and and JSON. And, um, yeah, yeah. Well, the rest it, it, mm. it doesn't matter. You can either call do the soap or the rest in in JSON format or XML. Mm. It it just mm-hmm. you can uh, you can set it whatever whichever way you want. Um, you see that the, the the older applications use more soap uh, to to run their APIs, and the newer ones uh, use uh, like uh, the 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 whole uh, Office 365 is using uh, the Graph uh, API. Which is mm-hmm. uh, is a restful uh, uh, JSON-based uh, API, which uh, runs like a charm. Hmm. It, it's it's fast. It's easy to read. It's uh, and and with the older soap calls, sometimes it's um, well, it, it it makes it more challenging. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but do different RPA products support different protocols, or is it? Pretty standard for them all to support the basics. Uh, the, the the restful APIs, the REST APIs are all are uh, covered by all the platforms I know at least. Um, I'm not sure about SOAP calls or other kind of um, curl kind of languages which you can use or. Uh, but I assume they would more or less do the same as as our uh, supplier uh, mm-hmm. gives the functionality. Okay. Um, with regards to orchestration, just want to, before we conclude with that, I just want to clarify. So using the RPA orchestration tool, you can have the orchestrator initiate activity. It calls one bot. That bot can then independently interact with others via their respective APIs. Yep. It'll then return some sort of result back to the orchestrator to indicate that the workflow has been completed. Yep. And then you can build in things like compensation logic, exception handling logic for when things yep. go wrong. So it's just standard orchestration um, design that's yes. applicable to to how bots can interact and then also how they can deal with uh, failure conditions. Yeah, and um, what we typ- typically do in in uh, because you have to think our robots are still actually humans doing the work faster. Um, so if we don't succeed, if we have a um, a flow of robots which which is uh, uh, which we we uh, start with the orchestrator, 
um, if one of them goes wrong, we uh, always report back to the users or to the a user group or to whatever, wh whoever, um, that something went wrong. Um, and we, we, we use like, like 80, 20, uh, like 80% is going right. And some 20% or less, uh, is, is falling off the wagon due to God knows what, um, uh, but, but we, we get, we, we, we put those kind of, uh, stuff that we don't get through, which is not processed correctly. Uh, we put it on a list. Um, and it's just a simple SharePoint list. Uh, where we said you know, we we tried to do this. This is the the information which we got when we started. Uh, we finished everything until here, and then we stopped. And then it's 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 uh, um, uh, the end user who has to uh, figure out what to do next. Um, and that's the that's that's the 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 nice thing about robotics in this kind of situation because we're doing exactly the same as they would do. Um, uh, so they also know what to do if we say them where we stopped. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're planning for an an expect especially if you use multiple bots um, sequentially, um, you have to get some kind of uh, uh, knowledge on what went right and what went wrong. Um, but but yeah, you can you can build that kind of logic into your robots, or you can uh, use your logging to determine that. Or there are multiple ways on 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 getting that information to the to the end user.